Hi, I'm George and welcome to GMakes and this is a quick tutorial on how to do a chromatic aberration or dispersion or VHS effect in Blender. Uh, this effect in this kind of aesthetic style is also seen in shows such as Netflix's Sex Education, which I've been kind of on a kick of of doing tutorials about. Uh, I did a texting tutorial, how to do the animation and match the aesthetic style of it in After Effects, uh, which you haven't checked out. You should go ahead and do that. It's pretty cool. You learn how to make a cool texting effect. Uh, and this is kind of a secret part three of that series. But this one... We're in Blender! Uh, I've got a new file loaded up here. Uh, I've got the good old basic scene, and I'm going to delete everything except for the camera. This step's not wholly necessary, uh, as you'll see later, but you know, it's Blender, why not delete the default cube? Uh, and so right away, we are going to head straight into the compositing uh, editor. This is pretty much, not pretty much, this is where we'll spend the whole tutorial. It's a really simple effect. Uh, but to start, we have to go ahead and click Use Nodes up here in the corner. Uh, and with that, we have our basic node set up. Uh, you probably won't see anything uh, for two reasons. One, because we do not have a viewer, a way to see the footage. And two, we don't have any footage. First things first, though, we don't need our Render Layers node because we're not going to actually be rendering anything in our layout space, in the 3D modeling space. So I'm just going to delete that. Shift A to open my search window, and I'm going to type a movie into it to get our movie clip node. Uh, if you're doing an image, you could just type image and use an image clip or an image or an image sequence, but I'm going to use a movie uh, for this. So I'm going to open up the clip I want to use, which is this little footed, bit of footage uh, of me practicing, <laughs> more or less practicing my kendama. Um, kind of from the end of uh, my modeling a Kandama video, which again, if you haven't checked that out, you should. It's just a fun, chill time where I model uh, something in my apartment, which happens to be Kandama for that episode or that little video. Uh, anyway, we have my footage loaded up. Uh, we have our composite editor over here. And now lastly, I'm gonna again shift A and insert a viewer node. Nothing to see yet. I'm gonna plug this image, my footage, into the composite node as well as into my viewer node and there we are uh, we can see my footage in the background i'm also going to hold shift and right click just to merge those into one um, and uh, but it's really filling up my background so i'm going to make sure i'm in this kind of toolbar area over here if this is not there uh, you might have closed it by hitting n so just hit n again to open it i'm going to go into view and now here you can move your backdrop you can fit it into the back and you can also reset it. Um, there's also shortcuts if you hover over these. As you can see, Alt, Middle, Mouse, at least for me, and the, the, the standard default uh, to move your background. The fit shortcut is something like Alt, Home. I don't know what the Home button is. I don't know if it means Windows or whatever. You can also control the zoom up here. Uh, anyway, I can see my footage now. It's in the background. I got my compositing setup all good to go. And now we're gonna do the one thing that is needed for this effect. Um, and to move this low node bit, I'm going to select it and hit G. Uh, short side note uh, for kind of things like that. Uh, if you go down to this bottom bar right here, uh, where it says change frame, box select, everything, whatever window you're on, you're in, that changes the shortcuts. And if you hold down a key like I'm holding shift right now, you can see it changes what I can do. I can right click to add reroute, which is what I did earlier. If I hold, hold control, I can cut links. Um, and if you hold Alt, you can detach, you can detach things together. It's so that's a pretty useful um, thing to know in case you can't remember a shortcut or you see someone do something in a video and you're like, how did they do that? Um, it's probably something to do with down here and holding a different key. Anyways, back to how to do this effect. We're going to input the only node we need, which if we shift A and search, it is a lens distortion node. This is a great little node because it has a couple different things and a ton of different uses for something so simple. So, to start off, uh, we can see that the two main bits of this are distort and this is dispersion right here. So, uh, distort does what it sounds like. Uh, it can distort it either positively to give you a rounded fisheye look or negatively to zoom you off into oblivion. <laughs> uh, and that is the very basic idea of that. Uh, and you can see um, if I choose uh, fit up here, this will just 
turn whatever you have up here into your frame, into a back into a rectangle. So I chose fit, and there we go, it's fixed again. Um, reset that, dispers that uh, distortion. Uh, and both of these, you'll see distort, caps at one, and dispersion, if I type one, which again is also the cap, uh, you can see what dispersion does. It does chromatic aberration. Um, it does that in-camera effect you usually get if there's something wrong with your lens or if you're using a filter where like a prism light filters through and you get a cool rainbow around the edges. Uh, and that's very intense at one. If I choose fit again, you'll see it fills up the image to create a square or a rectangle, I suppose, is what this actually is. Uh, but for like doing something like the sex education aesthetic, one is a lot. Uh, I find that somewhere around uh, uh, somewhere around 0 0.05 is kind of the max you want to do if you're just going for a subtle effect to kind of frame uh, who's ever in focus and in the center. Um, 0 0.03 kind of I find looks really nice. It's just enough to kind of blur those edges, um, but not enough to make it look weird or, or really distort your main image. Um, and that's the basic of it, and now it's, if you want to achieve that VHS kind of look, uh, there's this button right here which is projector, and this will just cause the dispersion to happen horizontally. So I'm going to bump this back up to 1, because um, this effect I think looks best either at like 0.5 or 1, which again is the strongest. Uh, and now if I hit projector, you're going to see once it composites real quick, it's just in the horizontal. So especially around my forehead right here, if we zoom in, you can really see there's a nice line of red. Uh, and if we turn, if we mute this, turn projector back on, but if I hit M while this is selected to mute that node, it turns off and turn it back on. No need to mess with your, all, your red, your blues, your greens. No need to shift layers around. You know, one node, a click of a button. Um, this again doesn't go past one. You can type like 20 into here, but you'll see if you watch my forehead again, nothing much changes as if I type one. Nothing much changes. You could also use a math node to try to make this stronger, but this is really as strong as it gets. Um, so that's pretty much it. That's how to make uh, chromatic aberration or dispersion or the VHS effect. Um, and since I did have a movie clip here, if I do click play, it will very slowly because it's compositing in real time, uh, composite my footage, and you can kind of see how it looks. Um, again, this is with projector selected. Uh, the last thing, projector does disable these two, uh, again, fit. Um, so if you distort with projector enabled, um, nothing much will happen, because again, it's a projector effect. Um, but uh, yeah, and that's fun. Uh, but if I disable projector again, um, the last thing is jitter. It just adds a bit of jitter, a bit of noise to your footage, which might make it faster. Um, so if you're doing a little bit, like 0 0.02 or 0 0.03, and you're rendering a, rendering a lot of frames and you find it's taking a while, it might give you performance boost, might make it go a little faster. But if you have something very strong like this and very stylized, and I hit jitter, you're going to see really down here and kind of in the smoother uh, areas where it transitions, like right there. Uh, I don't know if you noticed that, but a bunch of noise popped up right there and things got a little chunkier. If we focus on that area again, if I turn off jitter and you see this little bit of rainbow, it's suddenly going to become a lot more smooth. Uh, so that's just what jitter does. Again, you don't necessarily need it, if, but if you're doing only a tiny bit of this and you find it's taking a long time, might as well try it and see if it gives you a little bit of performance boost. Um, the last thing is rendering this is a little weird. Because um, we are using the camera, but we're not actually rendering anything in the layout or 3D modeling space. So you will go up to here and hit render animation or render image. Um, but a couple things to make sure of uh, before you do that are in your render settings. You can be in Eevee's perfectly fine for this. Uh, make sure your comp uh, resolution fits your footage resolution. Otherwise, it will be cropped in. Uh, like I have uh, 4K footage in my background, so this would make it, this would only cover 50% of the area. So I would go 19 by 20, 19, blah, 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 19, 20, and I'm just times that by 2. 
and then 1080, I would times that by two to get my 4K footage resolution. And now if I were to render this, it would render in the correct frame. Another thing to make sure of is if you're doing a, it uh, doesn't really matter if you're gonna export as an image sequence, um, an EXR or a PNG or whatever, but if you're gonna just go straight ahead, since again, this is an image sequence, if you just wanna export straight into uh, a video file, make sure that both your frame range matches your footage and your frame rate matches your footage unless you want to change it for whatever reason um, and then make sure you have a output area designated uh, that is and that is it if i projector again and get back to that vhs looking effect uh, that is how to do uh, chromatic aberration uh, lens dispersion or your cool one click really vhs effect in blender real quick real simple no messing with different color layers, just one single node, this lens distortion node. Uh, anyway, hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. Hope you make something cool with it. Uh, I've been George, and I'll catch you next time. Bye!